Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, thank, thank you to the 101 Best and Brightest Org um, for inviting me to um, host this webinar. And welcome to everyone on the call and to uh, listen into this topic of how Assurance has built a best and brightest culture. Our agenda today is to talk about the Assurance story, uh, what we do, um, how, why, and when we decided to become a great workplace. We'll talk a bit about our culture and how it's built upon trust, pride, and camaraderie, and how we create core messaging to support that, as well as our tactics, um, the things that we do that provide dual returns, both for the company and for our employees, and how we deliver on that. So let's start with uh, who Assurance is and, and how we came to decide that we needed to create a best and brightest culture. Assurance provides business insurance services for other companies. We provide employee benefits coverage options, um, private insurance support, uh, financial services like 401k plans, and also surety services. Essentially, we sell insurance. And even in an, an industry like insurance, we have been able to um, achieve recognition and receive more than 100 awards over the past 12 years for our workplace culture, most notably including recognition as the best of the best overall winner for the Chicago Best and Brightest Companies to work for last year. Our journey as we embarked upon becoming a best workplace began with a leap of faith. We actually got into it sort of selfishly as a way to differentiate ourselves in the insurance industry. Um, no one, the years ago when we began, no one in our industry was doing this at that time. We actually invited in a, a consulting firm to evaluate our business, to take a look at the things that we were doing and, and how we might be able to differentiate ourselves in the marketplace. And what we learned is that even though we believe very strongly that we provide the best value to our clients and we provide the best cost options for our clients, we found through this research effort that our competitors were saying the exact same things. And so we had to find a different way to differentiate ourselves. And through the course of looking at culture and employee engagement as that differentiator, we ended up doing a lot more than just differentiating. According to numerous studies, companies that have engaged employees grow faster and are more profitable than those that don't. And it's no surprise that engaged employees are more productive, um, less likely to be involved in accidents, are less likely to leave, and are also much better at engaging with clients. So as we embarked on our own differentiation effort, we had hoped that we would lower turnover and that we would increase the happiness of our employees, the productivity levels, and our client retention as well. So as we look back for assurance over the last 20 years, we've grown from $8 million in revenue to $116 million. We've grown our employee base from 62 to, as of today, it's actually 500 employees. Our revenue per employee, which is an indication of productivity, has grown to 220,000 from 130. We also measure workload. Our account managers have what we call a book of business, and those books of business have grown from 420,000 per account manager to 1.2 million. And our regretted turnover um, has been reduced to 2%. Essentially, we have doubled our business every five years for the last 20, and we've done it organically. Other measures of success are having a lower instance of absenteeism. We have faster hire times, increased employee referrals, and our profit margin has increased from 5% to 17. What was very interesting to me when I joined Assurance and I was looking at all of the metrics, one metric that really blew me away as the HR leader is that 50% of the hires we make at Assurance every year come from internal referrals. And it just was a, a staggering statistic for me, but it is a statistic that is the same year in and year out at Assurance. So how did we do it? Everything we do as, an, as a company 
is an attempt to build at least one of three things, trust, pride, and camaraderie. We want our employees to trust in the direction of the company, to trust in their leaders and their managers. We want our employees to be proud of where they work and what they do, and we want our employees to enjoy the people they work with. I'm going to highlight in the next section the many, many ways we do all of this, but I want to start with our key messages because I really think that when people join our company, they're looking to find the what is that thing that makes us different? What is that thing that really you know, got them on board with being excited about working at Assurance? And, and it really is this core message that we have around minimizing risk and maximizing health. This is our passion. It serves to tell our clients how we help them, and more importantly, it tells our employees why the work that they do matters every day. By working with clients to minimize risk and maximize health, every Assurance employee has the opportunity to improve the quality of people's lives, help workers avoid injury, even save lives, grow the economy, help families gain access to medical care, make a secure and comfortable retirement possible for millions of people, and increase overall happiness in the workplace. We share this with our employees when they're onboarded during orientation, and we have found ways over the years to make this really come to life within our employees. For example, we had a, a little culture initiative where we asked every one of our employees to record a selfie video explaining to the world, or at least to their fellow employees here at Assurance, what it is that they do in their job every day that minimizes risk and maximizes health. And it was truly a powerful, powerful effort that brought it home to everyone why they get up out of bed every day and why they care about doing the work they do every day for Assurance. I'm sure many of your companies have some sort of set of core values. Well, our DNA are ours, and they describe who we are as a company and how we deliver to the promises we make to our clients. Dominate is how we look at our competition and how we beat them by doing the best that we can do. Um, navigate stands for the tough challenges that we're faced and how we navigate them with speed. And appreciate, which is important to us in how we appreciate our employees, and how we appreciate our clients on a regular basis. We also have leveraged this really set of core values and other initiatives in the company. For example, we've named our manager training program DNA Leadership, and it is that special, uh, that special mixture of the things we do as leaders that make assurance so unique. And we also have incorporated into our performance process called DNA Performance, which really looks at how we can help each one of our employees be as successful as they could possibly be in the work they do every day. We've also integrated key long-term goals into our core messaging through what we're calling our 2020 vision. Um, this is what we put out almost five years ago as to where we wanted to be at the end of 2020. And we've actually already eclipsed one of the key milestones. We've surpassed our $250 million in client value goal, which is a calculation we perform each quarter, hoping to provide our clients with three times more value than the revenue we take in from each of them. We're currently on track to eclipse the $150 million in revenue by the end of 2020. And we've also set um, a long-term vision to reach $1 billion, billion in value creation for our clients. Another set of core messaging that we pay very close attention to is our what we call 11 best and brightest characteristics. And I know you're thinking, well, why did they do 11? You know, 10 is a good round number, but we happen to have some Spinal Tap fans in our leadership team, and so they thought they'd amp it up to 11, which kind of gives you a little bit of a clue in that uh, music and uh, pop culture are a pretty popular thing here at Assurance, too. But these 11 characteristics define really either aspirationally or actually the way we want to be when we show up for work every day. And these are the characteristics that we hold most dear. It's also how we identify candidates who would be a great fit with our company. 
is that we interview based on some of these traits and characteristics, especially in roles where some of these become much more important, um, such as flexibility or accountability. And so we've created interview guides that are based on some of these characteristics. So I've touched a lot on our overall messaging and how we communicate our long-term goals. But all of our companies also have short-term goals. And these things change from year to year as businesses change and need to be flexible. So to communicate our annual goals in a fun and inspiring way, we lean on our annual theme. Each year our executive team selects a theme song, usually a really, really bad one from the 80s. And through that 80s song, we're able to communicate our vision for the year, encapsulating our goals, or what we want our employees to focus on. And sometimes these are business-focused, and other times they're cultural. So for example, in 2018, the year we opened a new office in DC and announced our plans to expand to five geographic lo locations by 2025. We selected the theme ROCK in the USA, the song by John Mellencamp. In 2017, on the heels of a divisive election, we turned to The Power of Love by Huey Lewis in the News because we thought the world needed a little more love. And in 2016, our financial forecasts had us falling just short of $100 million in revenue, but we couldn't set a revenue goal for just $98 million. So we set it for 100 and let our employees know that we needed them to push it. We needed them to push it real good, like the salt and pepper song. So this approach has served us phenomenally as a way to get our employees on the same page and literally dancing to the same beat each year. We announced this theme at a company-wide offsite meeting every January. And when employees return to their desks, they each find a detailed roadmap for the year explaining the theme, why we picked it, what this year will be about, and outlining our shared success bonus program for the year. So with that, I'd like to now share some of the other tactics we use to build engagement, camaraderie, and trust through the business. Jan mentioned this earlier in the intro that we have a fantastic wellness program that we call Eye of the Tiger. Um, hearkening back to the um, themes each year, the first year we rolled out this wellness program, our musical theme for the company for the year was Eye of the Tiger uh, from the Rocky movies. And it really created a, a real energy and buzz and, and spirit around how important wellness is to us as a company. And it got everyone on the same page in, in looking at self-reflecting and how healthy are they in their lives, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally as well. So as an employee benefits broker, having a progressive corporate wellness program, it, it takes a special place in our heart. And it shows how committed we are to having um, the best in class wellness program out there. The reasons we do it is we know the power for minimizing risk and maximizing health really lies at its core in having a wellness strategy. We want to incentivize employees to engage in our award-winning culture. And we sell these programs to clients. And practicing what we preach is just good business. We've become somewhat of a proof of point for lowering employee benefits costs through our own experience with having a wellness program. So how does the program work? Basically, employees can earn points throughout the year for practicing our wellness philosophy of know it, prevent it, do it. In November, employees can earn a bonus based on the number of points that they had accumulated throughout the year. So at that point, employees know whether or not they fall in a silver, gold, or platinum category based on how many points that they've accumulated. Our hope each year is that everyone in the company will at least reach the gold category. We also hope that we have as many employees as possible complete a biometric screening and a health risk assessment. Jan alluded to participation in this program is as high as 95%. We have 95% of our employees complete that biometric screening and health risk assessment every year. We also have 83% of our employees achieve gold status every year or more. 
So it does show that through our program, we've been able to um, achieve high levels of engagement and um, high levels of whole, holistic wellness throughout the company. Through this program, we host two key camaraderie building events each year. The first of those two events is our annual We Can Be Heroes 5K. It's a superhero 5K that encourages our employees and their families to maximize health while also giving back to the community. Through the event, we raise money each year for different wellness-focused charities. And uh, we, we do our best to really have not only a, a health and wellness event, but an event that people can feel proud of because they have given back to the community. Our second event is our annual Assurance Olympics, which coincidentally is scheduled to happen today. And unfortunately, we're freaking out a little bit because there's a lot of rain planned for today, and uh, we do host this event outside. Our employees get assigned to a random team. They're given a team theme to coordinate team outfits and employees compete against each other in a handful of team building contests with medals going out to the winning teams for each event. And of course, we give a medal also to the best dressed team. Another very special and important initiative that we have is our Assurance Caring Together Committee. This is a rotating committee of passionate employees that provide necessary leadership to rally the company around an exciting charitable vision. They partner with local charities to organize dozens and dozens of what we call ACT Day events for our employees, where we give each employee a paid day off to participate in the charitable event of their choice. Our employees join together to help maintain forest preserves, pack food at food banks, build dream bedrooms for children with terminal illnesses, and much, much more. Since 2005, we've donated more than 20,000 labor hours and raised more than a million dollars for charitable causes. Another program we have is called the Power of Love Card Program that offers all of our employees dozens of cards for every possible occasion that have been custom built by our marketing team. These cards are stationed throughout our offices and are free to employees to use and to send handwritten notes to each other, to their family, or to their clients and prospects. We did have a cultural goal in 2017 where we asked all of our employees to send out 20 handwritten cards to clients or prospects and 17 handwritten cards to their family. And we asked if 85% of our employees achieved that goal of sending out those 37 cards that our employees would each re receive a $250 bonus. And we did end up achieving that goal, even surpassing it. Our less than 500 employees at the time ended up sending out more than 15,000 handwritten cards that year to then surpass the goal. A little helium goes a long way to recognize new talent and reward advancement at Assurance. Quirky and colorful animal balloons decorate our office spaces, and they indicate someone who is either new to the company or someone who's recently earned a new designation um, from an education perspective. So the only elephant in the room are those that indicate educational success for our employees. And we help our employees reach those milestones through a robust in-house training program. We also have a digital recognition platform. Our Appreciate site um, allows any employee to publicly recognize another by sending them a digital high five. All of our high fives are displayed in a Facebook type news feed and they also scroll through on our office LCD screens. The system also allows our managers to instantly send gift cards of up to $100 to any employee for exceptional work. And it helps us understand, or helps us to also recognize our milestone anniversaries. Leading up to an employee's milestone anniversary, the system is super cool. 
It actually knows who you are close with within the company. It looks at who you have given high fives to, who you've received high fives from. It knows your work circle. Um, and basically sends out automated emails ahead of a big milestone to all of the people within that circle, and it invites them to congratulate a fellow employee on experiencing a milestone. We have special messages for key milestones like one year, three year, five year, and then we recognize milestones every five years after that. And we've customized the messages for each that um, indicate a, a congratulatory message from our executive team. And then below that are all the messages from everyone else in the company who are congratulating an employee for their milestone. It's really very cool, and it's, it's almost like that effect that Facebook has on your birthday when you get all of those happy birthdays from people and how great that makes you feel. Well, we've tried to take that and, and bottle it up for how people might feel for that milestone, which is how many years that they've spent at Assurance. These two that you see right now are our IDEA mascots. Their names are Ivan IDEA and Sharon IDEA. And they're the faces of the site we've set up where any employee can submit an idea to improve business process or our culture. Through the site, employees can comment on and upvote other ideas. Then a committee comprised of key members um, of teams across the company meet and discuss how can we implement the best ideas that we've received? We believe employees should have their cake and eat it too, and all employees are awarded their birthday off. And we also send home a different gift every year for their birthday along with a card from our executive team. So for example, um, I mentioned the 2018 theme of ROCK in the USA was our theme. Well, for the birthday gift, all of our employees received a set of theme-branded luggage tags um, to put on their suitcases. In 2017, our Power of Love theme provided all of our employees on their birthday with one of those portable power banks um, to indicate you know, the power of love. My personal favorite, I alluded to uh, our 2016 theme earlier of Salt and Peppa's Push It. And I was just so thrilled to receive um, salt and pepper <laughs> branded salt and pepper shakers, which was really um, a very clever birthday gift. Our executives do communicate regularly with our employees, which I think is a really uh, strong cultural message. Um, they rotate each month and they post a Stay Connected blog on our intranet where they reflect on whatever is really on their mind. It could be something in their personal life. It could be something professionally. Um, sometimes, really, the most powerful blogs that we've had, though, are where our executives have shared something very personal that allows everyone else in the company to really find potentially something that they have in common that they wouldn't have known otherwise. And, and I've found our employees really do look forward to every time those blogs change over and uh, really appreciate the fact that our, our leaders have made themselves so accessible and so real to our employees. Each August, we close our office, offices for an entire Friday. We bus our employees to an off-site location and we just pretty much party. Um, we held our Employee Appreciation Day last year at Wrigley Field where our employees were able to tour the stadium. They even toured the clubhouse and met and received autographs from Ryan Sandberg and, and much more. We just want to make sure that we take a minute, we stop, and we do things for our employees to let them know how much we appreciate them. We also invite our employees and their significant other to a party with us once per year. Um, or once each December at a Chicago location for our employee holiday party. During our holiday party, we recognize a handful of employees of the year to those employees who have exemplified the teamwork, dedication, and performance we value. The winners each receive $3,000 in a bonus, a crystal award, and their name engraved on a permanent display within our office. We also continue to have a running page on our intranet that highlights all of our past employees of the year that we've had over the years. We also have a very robust benefit program that offers a variety of programs addressing the needs of our employees no matter where they are in life. 
I like to call this sort of an a la carte approach to employee benefits that because our employees are all in such different places in their life, that their needs are also different. And that we try to put ourselves in the shoes of each employee no matter where they are in their life and make sure that there are programs that we offer. Some are paid for the company, some are just voluntary offerings, but that they would speak to a person, either someone brand new to the workforce and think of the things that they might need like tuition reimbursement or long-term care or a robust 401k plan for people who are really concerned about how they will take care of themselves after they retire. The last item I'll share with you before we get to questions is really the flexibility that we offer in our scheduling and our telecommuting policy at Assurance. 15% of Assurance employees today work 100% remote. We have technology in place that supports that, that makes it feel as though they are in the office with us all the time. 95% of Assurance employees work from home one day a week. And 98% of our employees can work from multiple locations. We have two locations in Chicagoland area, one in Chicago and one in Schaumburg. And we invite most employees to spend time in both of those offices. So all of these tactics and, and core messages and really um, the themes that we choose, all of this culminates in a very unique and special culture here at Assurance that we spend a lot of time um, not only in the moment but also looking forward to make sure that we do all that we can to continue to have as we grow um, and continue to go very rapidly that we're able to continue and maintain with this wonderful culture. So with that, I will take a look back with Jan and see if there are any questions that anyone on the call has. Um, Jan? Thanks. Thanks so much, Michelle. This is outstanding. Um, my, my first question is, what's your 2019 theme song? Oh my goodness, so the 2019 theme song is Rolling Stone's Start Me Up. I and love it. Yeah, you know, who can argue with that opening riff, right? Like <laughs> any meeting we have, if you can play that opening riff, everyone knows that that is, um, you are about to hear the Rolling Stones Start Me Up. Um, we just have several initiatives that we have going on this year that it was the perfect theme for. Love it. It's like your walk-up song. Mm -hmm. um, you, uh, early on um, in your presentation, you alluded to um, a, a term that I had never heard before. And I, granted, I am not a human resources professional, but um, I spend a lot of time with them. Um, you said regretted turnover. Can you explain that? Sure. So we do a bit of analysis on our turnover, and um, we have some pretty strict performance guidelines. You can imagine in an industry like ours, um, for example, I'll take our producers. Um, there are very clear metrics that are around whether or not someone is successful in that role. And there are really financial consequences for roles like that, where if you don't actually create sales for the business, if you are, for example, on a 100% commission, you are not actually able to survive in that environment. So turnover that happens because of performance or because of things that are very clearly outlined, um, we look at that as kind of necessary turnover because we're not able to deliver on the goals of the business. Um, regretted turnover are those people who leave the company who were very, you know, who were performing and that we wished wouldn't leave. And so looking at that number a little bit differently allows us to really hone in on how best can we have strategies that retain our top level performers and, and we minimize the amount of uh, regretted turnover. Excellent. So I have a couple questions here about, um, and I had written one down myself. What's your HR budget? Um, Chris John, I know um, he's in one of our peer groups, asks, all of these programs sound great. How do you fund all of this, um, all of these internal engagement programs? Well, that's a great question. We are uh, constantly looking at 
not only how much money we put towards these things, but we also look at what do our employees say to us about what they enjoy or don't enjoy or what are they engaging with most. And we are constantly looking at sort of the ROI and not just ROI financially, but ROI and engagement levels. And so there isn't an unlimited budget for this. What I will tell you is that we try to spend these dollars most effectively in the areas that we have heard from our employees that they care about the most. Um, we also have to think of making sure that we stay competitive from a compensation standpoint, and we are always looking at how can we budget and plan for employee engagement spend and also compensation spend in that all of these things are aimed at reducing turnover, um, building engagement, all of the things that we mentioned earlier in the presentation. So um, we as a business always look at engagement spend as a percentage of revenue, and mm -hmm. we always look to keep growing that revenue line, um, and we do so organically because that allows us to keep all of these programs in place and not have that spend get out of whack. Good. Um, and, and also along that line, you talked about um, your internal system that um, lets everyone connect with each other and give high fives and um, congratulations. Is is that your own platform, or um, did you did you adopt what what program do you use to make that happen? <laughs> well, I will tell you that it did start with our own developers that created our own internal High Five system on our intranet, and that served us very well for a period of time. And then, as we grew as a business, we recognized that that really needed to be in a platform that was more robust and we were able to consolidate two or three or four different engagement programs that we had in place by um, finding a vendor that would host that site for us. And the vendor that we selected for that is called WorkHuman. All right, that's a good one to write down, WorkHuman. Yes. Okay. They also and host a large HR conference every year, so if, if any of the, the folks on the phone are interested in that, um, without having to, um, if you're not interested, know if you don't want that program or not yet, there is a really wonderful HR conference they put on every year that would get, get them more information before jumping into that wonderful. completely. Okay, good. And um, how much of this, like the videos of the, your culture um, for the DNA or anything like that, how much is available for the public to see on your website? Hmm. Or is it all I pretty much a, held? Well, I think on our public website, what I will tell you is that we blog a lot. There's a lot of thought leadership out there about the things that we do. Um, we, we certainly, um, if someone wanted to reach out to me individually I'm, and they were interested in more information on something specifically, I'm happy to share it. I think there's okay. probably more on our intranet that faces our employees directly that is at the detail level um, that you might be asking. But certainly there are some things out on our external website. Okay. And, and would you use um, any of this for recruiting purposes? Well, throughout the recruiting process, certainly we, we see a lot of activity on our external website. Um, and we share quite a bit throughout the recruiting process. But where most of this gets shared with folks is as they are oriented to the company, we have a full day, day and a half orientation program where before we put someone behind the desk and get them off and running, we indoctrinate them to all of the things available to them to get engaged and be participative within the company. That's outstanding. Um, let's see. What was the screening that you um, required under the wellness program for silver and gold? Was that a biometrics? Is that what you said? Yes. Yeah, so each year in January, we have um, a company come on site to our locations and perform a biometric screening. Um, essentially, it's um, you know a blood draw and it's sort of um, you know height, weight, things like that, and a health risk assessment, which is just a survey that they complete online about their health and wellness habits. And the output of that um, 
results in a health coaching meeting that they have with someone who helps them identify their risk factors, understand the results of that screening, and then create a plan for them to improve any areas that came through within that screening as areas of opportunities for them to become more healthy or more well. And, and does that coach stay in touch with them through a certain they amount do. of time? Or that's they do. It, it's at the option of the employee, but right. we provide more points for that first meeting. We incentivize people to have that meeting with a health coach so that they can yep. set out a plan for the year. And then there's a, a smaller number of points if you continue to engage with the coach throughout the year. Good job. Um, another question. Uh, <laughs> How, how many people are in your, on your HR team, and how, um, how is it um, configured? How are people responsible for different functions? And uh, um, let us know. What, what's your team look like? Okay. So my team has um, a director of human resources who reports into me, and she's responsible for talent acquisition, uh, manager training, and all performance or employee relations related things. And the director has two direct reports, a recruiter and HR generalist. I have a, an employee benefits and comp manager who also oversees payroll. And she has two employees within that group that assist with you know, employee onboarding and data entry into our systems. I also have a producer recruiter because we are a sales-focused business, and so we have um, one talent sourcing analyst who is strictly dedicated just to that effort. So that's six people. Wow. And um, obviously you get a lot of help from uh, your marketing team uh, to create such wonderful pieces. And then um, how about gathering all the metrics? Um, who is responsible for that? Well, within my benefit and comp team, we, we have um, within that group, they oversee our HR systems. And so they do some analytics that are, we have some standard monthly analytics we look at, and then there's other pieces that we look at a little less frequently. But that's within my benefit and comp team. Great. That's wonderful. Um, anybody else have any other questions? Anything that sparked um, anything you wanted to add, Michelle? Nothing from my perspective. Okay. But I'm happy to answer right. any other questions. All right. Um, let me see what else I have in my notes. I'm flipping pages. I wrote down so much. Um, how are you? Um, how are you using the Start Me Up uh, this year um, with any of your additional programs or uh, ideas? Well, um, we are actually going to a new headquarters this year. So we're moving in Schaumburg just down the road a piece. So one of our <laughs> one of our initiatives is moving, or you know, we, we're calling it starting us up a new location. And so there's Great. some things that we're trying to do as a business around that move, and um, leveraging our space differently. So we're moving to a more of a free address approach, which is like um, more people hoteling versus having set office cubicles or office space, so that's part of our program this year. Um, we also have um, an employee cultural question that we're asking all of our employees to post a picture of themselves and share with us how they are going to, through their job, help us as a company continue to grow organically and um, not only grow with new business but retain the business we have and, and continue to that start me up energy around our company. So we just have a, a lot of different initiatives that all had this theme of really you know, engaging in a strong way in these new initiatives in the company. Very cool. Um, a couple of new questions here. Um, looks like uh, 
all based on how do you how do you come up with the metrics for your um, ultimate rewards? Um, how do you choose the employee of the year? Um, how are the metrics set for bonuses? Do you want to go into that a little bit more? Sure. So about four years ago, we took a look at our job descriptions, and we took a hard look to say if, if this is what fully describes what a person does in a certain job, how does that person or how does the supervisor actually know when that person's successful in that job? How do, they, how do they know that they're actually doing a good job? So we began to incorporate what we call key success measures into the job description to where if there's a section that says client service is part of their job and it goes into some detail about that, what would be a key measurable for that person to know whether or not they were successful in client service. So a metric like client retention for the book that they work on might be the metric. So we began to tie to every single job description these key success factors, and we trained our managers on how to take the key success factors and turn them into annual goals for each individual person. And I will tell you that it is a journey that we're on. Um, we've been doing this for two or three years. We get better at it every year. But it is a skill that takes time and it takes a lot of practice for managers to get really great at it. And we think that it is going to translate best to each employee knowing on any day, any given day, how they are actually performing in their job, the more you can tie it to a, a number or a metric that um, can be an indicator for them. Yeah, I know that's very, very hard because most managers want to um, get down to are you filling out this paperwork correctly when that's really not what's most important. It's um, how, they're, how they're dealing with a customer. <laughs> so right. I, I understand how that can, be, um, that can be tough from, you know, whoever is doing the writing of the job description and who's doing mm -hmm. the evaluating. Right, right. All right, it looks like we're good. Um, thank you so very much for providing this information, and congratulations on your um, Elite Winner Award. I, I believe you guys are in the um, national um, co uh, competition as well for Best and Brightest Companies. Yes, that's and true. So I will add um, that again to everyone that the uh, National Summit this year is September 15th through the 17th in Chicago. And uh, my favorite, Patrick Lencioni is the keynote speaker. And if you're not sure who he is, um, I'm sure you've heard of The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. Um, somebody had to read it to or recommend it to you uh, somewhere around your, along your career. Um, so we're really looking forward to having him uh, join us as a keynote for that event. Um, the national awards will be presented then, along with the Chicago Best and Brightest Awards will be during that time. Um, we do have peer groups of HR people that meet in a number of cities, um, including two in Chicago, Houston, Atlanta, and because we're headquartered in Detroit, we now have five groups meeting in the Detroit area. So if you'd like more information on those, let us know. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, again, I'll remind you that you'll get a survey monkey evaluation from me, and that's how you can get credit for today's session. So thank you again, Michelle. You're and very Sharon. welcome. Thank you for having me. And we will close the program now. That does conclude the webinar for today. We thank you for your participation and ask that you please disconnect your line.